but um, it seems like you know the atmosphere in here is pretty good. Um, you know, it's it's there's a lot of new faces, um, a lot of good additions that we made this off season. Um, our lineup's a lot deeper, which you know very excited about, and um, I think everyone's just excited to get things going. Um, I think you know things didn't end the way we wanted to last year, and it's pretty frustrating. So. Um, just getting that opportunity to get going and you know make things right. We saw a lot of videos of you in the off season. What's the most impactful thing you think you did to improve your game? Uh, probably the the swing aspect. Um, just cleaning a lot of things up. Spent spent a good bit of time over at Driveline, and um, you know they they've got a lot of technology, a lot of smart guys over there to to help, and um, you know very excited to kind of put that into into the game. Ty, what was that experience like for you working in that manner? Uh, it was really cool. Um, you know, there's, it's crazy to see how, how bad my swing was like, like on like a mechanical aspect. Um, so to get all that, that, that stuff cleaned up and, um, you know, it's still not, not perfect. There's still, you know, I have created a lot of, a lot of years of bad habits. So, um, just trying to get, get as clean as possible and, um, you know, tighten all that up and, Throughout the the fall the fall off season, I think we made a lot of adjustments and a lot of improvements. What did they feel like the bad habits were that they were able to kind of diagnose for you? Uh, I was just very handsy. Um, I was I was hitting primarily with just my hands. I wasn't using the rest of my body properly. Um, so just trying to get all the sequencing together and um, you know trying to get and get my body to you know, fire in the right order um, so I can create as much much power and strength and um, keep my bat in the zone as long as possible. It looks like you kind of have a new setup in the box too. Is that kind of reflective of the changes that? Yeah, it's part of it. Yeah. It just seems like there's it's, you're a little more still. You're not moving around as much when you're doing you know, pre pitch. Yeah, and that's not something I necessarily tried to do. Um, I think just kind of cleaning up everything else that just kind of happened. Was there a moment like JP said there was a moment where like they were preaching, they were preaching, they were preaching, wasn't working. And then one day he hit a ball and it was just like, okay, this is how I want it to feel. Did you have that moment? Uh, no, I wouldn't necessarily say it's one ball that I hit. Um, we spent a lot of time um, the first time I went up there just trying to to clean clean as much up as possible, and um, they were very good about just sitting me down and showing me, all right, this is this is how you were before. This is what you need to look like, um, and so just trying to piece all that together. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say it was one swing. It was you know, the entire off season worth of swings. All the motion capture stuff that they have, like, was it, did you understand everything? Like when they were breaking it down, they have all the video and all this, this I think the swing mechanics of it all being efficient. Did you understand it there's, all? Or? There's a lot, a lot that goes into it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say I understood all of it, but majority of it. Um, and they were very good about explaining the stuff that I didn't understand. Ty, after going through all that, do you hear Tony Gwynn in, in the background after all the things that uh, you worked with Tony years ago while you were in college? About, you know, about hitting and made you a good hitter? Um, kind of, sort of. Um, uh, he was just so good at, at hitting and um, it was very, very simple. And now there's there's a lot more, I guess, science that goes in, into hitting that you just didn't never really thought about. I'm sure, you know, as part of it back then, just not as advanced, but, um, you know, it, he, he was just so good at it. He, yeah. did, he didn't have you know all these different cues and keys that he needed he just got his foot down and swung so um but there there's aspects of, of the swing that i still you know that he taught that i want to keep so and right. ball up hard off the top of the long circle mm -hmm. that's still the same yeah yeah but incorporating all this stuff the legs the sequencing what do you what should the results be or what should is it just the bat in the zone i mean from a baseball standpoint is it less swing and miss is it harder to right center what, is, what, do, what should happen if you do it right uh oh i mean if you do it right you should i mean hit the ball hard I mean, that was one of the big things we worked on was not only just the sequencing stuff but um you know adding uh bat speed um i added probably close to three and a half miles an hour bat speed throughout the throughout the off season so um that was another important thing that we wanted to to do and um, most of it was just by cleaning up my mechanics. I was able to add more bat speed. So, um, you know, if, if everything is done correctly, the swing swing is done properly. My my barrel's in the, lo the the zone a lot longer, and you know, it should it just gives me more room for air. 
hitting has come so natural to you for your whole life. But when did you realize that maybe you needed to adjust things to go to a place like Driveline to, you know, kind of potentially propel your career? Um, I, I think for me, you know, I've kind of like you mentioned, I've, I've just always hit my whole life and I've, I've gotten away with, um, you know, not having someone in the off season to help guide me, coach me. Um, I, I obviously am in touch with JD and uh, Tony throughout the off season. Um, you know, we have Brownie over here, but um, I've always kind of just done things on my own. And, um, you know, obviously last year didn't go the way I wanted. So um, I thought it was time to kind of try something new and um, saw you know, how successful JP was and how, how good driveline worked for him. So. Um, I figured if I'm going to start somewhere, I might as well start there. Were there any other changes to what you normally do in an off season? Um, eh, not, not too much, no. I mean, I spent a lot of time, you know, trying to get my body where it needs to be, um, and you know, in the weight room. But for the most part, that I, I try and do that every off season. So um, this off season's main focus was just trying to get the swing right. Ty, did you know you'd be on the internet in your underwear? Honestly, <laughs> it's like <laughs> no. So they, I mean, I didn't. I don't have Twitter and all that, and so I don't follow, you know, what they do or what they post or anything. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, they asked me if they could film me, um, and I figured I was already like taped up with all the sensors and stuff on. I thought it was for like research purposes, and the next day I was driving. <laughs> I was driving to driveline, and my wife called me and. Um, told me I was in my underwear on the internet. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that, was, that was supposed to happen. I mean, like, they, when you look at the, the posts and guys like George and all these guys and, are liking it. And did you hear from your teammates when you were doing that? Like, hey. Yeah, yeah. I got a few text messages. <laughs> I, but, but I mean, at the same time, they understand why you're doing it. They got to oh, mock yeah, you yeah. because you mock them all the time. But, yeah, you know, I mean, if you dish it, you got to take it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Todd, talking to a lot of the players here, they. They seem, you know, obviously disappointed with the way things ended last year. It's kind of driven them this year. Is that kind of how you guys feel here? That you were so close that that you need to just put a little bit more to get to get over that hump and and win the division? Yeah, I mean, I I think uh, you know, like I kind of mentioned earlier, we we're I, I, uh, one upset, but two confused. We weren't we weren't sure what to do after the last game because we the whole year we preached playoffs, we were going to go to the playoffs, and then we didn't get there, and we were like, okay. What do we do now? I guess we just go home. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think that definitely motivated us and kind of you know, lit a fire under us. And you know, we're talking to a lot of the returning guys. Um, you know, they're definitely excited to get things going again. Did you watch the postseason at all? I mean, I don't know, like if you're a you know a baseball guy that watches a bunch of games. Did you watch it? Because like talking with like Julio, he said it was frustrating, but also showed like how close you were. It was the Astros and the Rangers mm -hmm. right there, and you, you bowed.